folks, Kevin here again. Yeah, I'm back on the island of Hergsora. And uh, yeah, last time I was here, the ferry was very busy on the way over. This time there were only a few cars. So uh, I'll show you quickly a map of Hergsora and then I'll show you where we're going to go today. So this nice wooden map here, near here, this is uh, Hergsora Harbour. And I will go along these nice sand roads and work my way west all the way to an area called Sandvik. It's an area which is allowed to camp overnight. Weather has been really hot for the last two weeks, so it's been 25 degrees or over. And uh, today is no different. Today is being like 27 degrees. So uh, I brought two and a half liters of water with me, and hopefully I can find some more on the way to the campsite and fill up my other bottle. Otherwise, I'm going to be rather thirsty. There are budlea or sureni. Bushes growing everywhere, purple and white, and the smell is absolutely beautiful. So it was forecast for thunder and lightning this weekend, which made me think twice about whether or not to come out or not. So far it's just been on the mainland, although every now and again in the background over there where the sky is really dark, there are some quite ominous rumblings, as long as it stays over in the mainland. No, I should be all right. But in the distance is one of the three very large wind turbines that are on the island and indeed are well-known landmarks of the island because they can be seen out at sea and uh, as such are good as a landmark for navigation. Welcome to Sandvik Beach. Cheers. Here is my setup. I have the Vesovic Draka hammock under which I have a cheap uh, so called parachute silk hammock from Temu. I use this as a gear sling. And then I have a DD hammocks 3x3 meter tarp on top. Quite a nice, comfortable setup and uh, looks quite stealth except for my not so stealthy puffer jacket and I also have my towel with me so you can spot me a mile off with these two Well, time for an early morning dip. Whew. Yeah, it doesn't feel so warm, but uh, yeah, let's see how we get on. Finally, the last people have gone from the place, so I have it entirely to myself now. While this is a very pleasant place, having people around me, both sides of me, was a little bit of a Little bit of a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. Uh, people were making noise, and yeah, I guess I've been spoiled by winter camping where I'm pretty much uh, alone the entire time, and the only sound is natural sound or the sound that I make. 
So, um, yeah, that's something to get used to. And also something to think about again for the next time that I come back that uh, I might have to pick my spot a little bit more carefully. One thing I did want to report on was my my setup for last night. Uh, yeah, I uh, need to pay more attention to how I put up the tarp. It is long enough to keep the hammock dry and during the thunderstorm with the heavy rain for some reason the tarp was right beside the hammock and actually touching it and then the hammock and underquilt started to get wet because water was running down the side of it. it turns out that the top of the tarp developed a strange belly of water uh, uh, close to where the uh, tarp is attached to the ridge line. It made a big belly that basically hung down right on top of me and as the weight of the water increased and increased and increased it pulled in the tarp on this side until it was actually touching and in some cases it wasn't even covering the hammock anymore. So basically I had to get up empty out that big belly of water and then peg out the peg out the tarp tautly. It might make more sense that you have the tarp going over the ridge line and then I have to be more careful about spanning it out quite tight so that the hammock is covered but also that the rain can't collect on top of the tarp and just should just run straight off. One thing I was also quite impressed with was how fast my sleeping bag and my underquilt dried. So uh, I put up some, some ropes so that I could actually hang them up to dry and they, they really didn't take too long to dry at all. And even with it being damp, my both my sleeping bag and my underquilt kept me warm. So I'm quite grateful for that. I'm glad though that it was as warm as it is. If it had been maybe 10 degrees or below, yeah, it could have been a a lot more miserable situation. So here we are in the port of Hugswara and uh, it's a very popular place for sailing boat people to bring their boats and tie up for a night. Uh, it's quite a nice little harbour and it has a small coffee shop here that in the busier season you can get ice cream or coffee and uh, yeah it's still only the start of June so the saving season hasn't really started yet uh, but it'll pick up quite rapidly within the next two weeks and hit a peak around uh, midsummers. So he made it back to the car and uh, about to start the journey back to Turku and to home. Uh, I hope you enjoyed following me on this adventure to Hugsara Island and um, you enjoy the Finnish nature with me in all its glorious forms, whether sunshine or indeed whether rain and thunder. So I hope you will join me on my next adventure, hiking and camping and uh, you're very welcome along. So until then, this is Kevin signing off from Hergzara. All the best. Moi moi.